poverty in Pakistan. At the time of partition and independence in 1947, Pakistan inherited the most backward parts of South Asia with only one university, one textile mill and one jute factory. The country has made tremendous progress and its per capita gross national product remains the highest in South Asia. During the last decade, poverty elimination programs helped many of people to participate and rise. However, the global financial crisis and other factors like the occupation of Afghanistan have impacted Pakistani growth. Besides, poverty in Pakistan can be attributed to the disproportionate impact of economic events in the rural and urban areas. Gender discrimination in Pakistan also shapes poverty in the country. Traditional gender roles in Pakistan defines the woman's place as in the home and not in the workplace and define the man as the breadwinner. Constantly, society invests far less in women than men. Women in Pakistan suffer from a poverty of opportunity throughout their lives. All this coupled with the rise of honor killings against women, a legal system that is regarded as misogynistic, and the intransigent denial of these problems by the Pakistan government as well as their institutionalized harassment of women's rights groups operating in the country, contribute to the deteriorating situation with the women and the rise in their poverty. Economic vulnerability is a key factor in the rise of poverty in Pakistan. Vulnerability also arises from social powerlessness, political disenfranchisement, and ill-functioning. Some other causes of vulnerability in Pakistan are the everyday harassment by corrupt government officials as well as their underperformance, exclusion and denial of basic rights to many in Pakistan. Also, the lack of adequate health care by the state leads the poor to seek private sources, which are expensive but is still preferable to the possibility of medical malpractice and being given expired medicine in the state-run medical facilities. Environmental problems in Pakistan such as erosion, use of agrochemicals, deforestation etc. contribute to rising poverty in Pakistan. Increasing pollution contributes to an increased risk of toxicity and poor industrial standards in the country contribute to rising pollution. By the end of the 1990s, how power is exercised in the management of a country's social and economic resources for development emerge as Pakistan's foremost developmental problem. Corruption and political instability such as various separatist movements in Balochistan and Waziristan resulted in a reduction of business confidence, deterioration of economic growth, reduced public expenditure, poor delivery of public services and undermining of the rule of law. Perceived security threat on the border with India has dominated Pakistan's culture and has led to the domination of the military in politics. Excessive spending on the defense at the expense of social sectors and the erosion of the law and order. Pakistan is home to a large feudal land holding system, where land holding families hold thousands of acres and do little work on agriculture themselves. They enlist the services of their serfs to perform the labor of the land. 51% of poor tenants owe money to their landlords. The landlord's position of power allows them to exploit the only resource the poor can possibly provide for their labor. The rise of poverty in the country has been correlated with the rise of Islamic fundamentalism in many parts of the country. Mother's education is offered on the pretext that they provide a better education than the other schools. They study in the religious environment that has been ridiculized by the world-sponsored exposure 
of the holy jihad in Afghanistan. As a result, Islamic political parties have become more powerful in Pakistan and have considerable sympathy among the poor. This phenomenon is also pronounced in the northwestern frontier province. The clergy has become more powerful in the Pakistan and has become considerable sympathy among the poor. For years, economists thought that countries throughout the world would follow the same basic pattern for economic development. It was thought that with some initial capital investment, nations would continue on a path from pre-industrial agrarian societies to industrialization. However, many today hold that these theories are highly misleading when they are applied to developing nations today. The situation faced by developing nations today is very different from those faced by developed nations when they were going through economic development. Among the new realities facing developing nations are a much larger population, fewer natural resources and poorer climate. Most importantly, today's developed nations did not have other powerful developed nations to contend with during their early process of development. This means that it is much more difficult for poor nations today to achieve economic development.